Hello, everybody. I'm Parsha Becky, and I know we had no Parsha last week because it was Rosh Hashanah, but this week we are back for our regularly scheduled Parshas. So, uh, I know our last Parsha was two whole weeks ago. As you recall from two weeks ago, we are still in the middle of reading the fifth book of Torah, the book of Devarim. Uh, the book of Devarim, Devarim means uh, things or words or speeches. And the whole book of Devarim consists of speeches about things that our leader Moshe thinks we need to know before we're ready to go into the land of Israel. Uh, now, if you recall, the end of our last parsha two weeks ago, the end of Nitzavim Vayelach, uh, we were told that Moshe was going to be learning a poem that he would be teaching to us. And now, in this week's parsha, we're ready to hear that poem. So this week's parsha is called Ha'azinu. Now, if you know your Hebrew, you'll recognize the sound ha'azinu. You'll recognize the word ozen inside ha'azinu. And then ozen is your ear. Uh, so you can probably figure out, even if you don't know the word, ha'azinu means listen up. Uh, the Parsha is called ha'azinu, and the poem in the Parsha is also called ha'azinu. And they are called ha'azinu because the Parsha and the poem in it uh, begin with Moshe saying, Ha'azinu, listen up sky and listen up earth. I need the sky and the earth to listen up to what I'm going to say. Because I'm not just saying this poem to the Jewish people, I'm saying it to the sky and the earth. So that even though people will come and go, new people will be born who haven't learned this poem yet. But the sky and the earth are around for generations, for thousands and thousands of years. The same sky and earth that were there when Moshe read this poem out the first time are still around today. So in case we forget that poem, we've got the sky and the earth to remind us. And if we really forget, the sky and the earth are going to say, hey, I told you so. Uh, so what, what are they supposed to listen to? What are we supposed to listen to? The poem continues by saying, you know what? Hashem is amazing. Hashem is so wonderful. Hashem is just perfect. But you know what? Hashem can be perfect. People are not perfect. We're not perfect. People make mistakes. We do things wrong sometimes. Uh, and... Uh, it's okay to make mistakes, but the problem is Hashem has been really, really great to us. Hashem has done amazing things for us, and we are kind of not so nice to Hashem in return, and that's not fair. And the poem says, let's give an example. I want you to remember something in the past. Now, for us, it's a long, long, long time ago, but for the Parsha, the people in the Parsha, it's not so long ago at all. It says, hey, remember how Hashem took you through the desert, and Hashem protected you and took care of you your whole time traveling the desert. And Hashem gave you food and water in the desert. Hashem gave you magic food from the sky. And then Hashem gave you the beautiful country, the land of Israel to live in. Hashem gave you all these wonderful things. But then, and now the poem becomes science fiction because it's telling the future. It's the past for us, but it's the future for the people listening in the Parsha. It says, but then you are going to, you're not going to be nice to Hashem in exchange for all the nice stuff Hashem does. You are going to forget about Hashem and ignore Hashem. And you're going to pray to idols. And we know Hashem does not like it when we pray to idols. So Hashem is going to get angry. And Hashem is going to have to punish you. And Hashem is going to bring all sorts of big, scary punishments. Some of the punishments that the poem lists include there might be a famine where there's no food to eat. Or there might be wild animals attacking. Or people will get sick. Or there will be wars where our enemies will start fights with us and they'll start winning. But, but the poem says, if it gets to that point, we make bad choices, we get punished, and our enemies are winning against us, uh, when our enemies start to say, oh, this is because we're so amazing, it has nothing to do with Hashem, oh yeah, Hashem doesn't like that, and then Hashem is going to start punishing our enemies, and Hashem is going to punish anyone who hurt us and anyone who was mean to us, and Hashem is going to protect us and keep us safe and bring us back home to our land of Israel. Uh, so, and the, the poem ends by saying, you know, there is no one like Hashem, there is nothing like Hashem. Hashem is so special, and we are so lucky to have our special connection to Hashem. And Moshe and Yoshua read this poem out to the Jewish people, and they teach it to everyone, so people will really know it. And Moshe says, hey, pay attention. I need you to listen carefully. I need you to remember this poem. I need you to memorize it. Go over and over and over it until you really know it. You're going to teach it to your kids, because maybe your kids haven't been born yet, or maybe they're babies, and they're not old enough to understand it yet. So when they get older, you're going to teach it to them and they're going to teach it to their kids and they're going to teach it to their kids and so on and so on because we all want to do the right thing. But sometimes it's hard and sometimes we don't remember to do the right thing or we don't remember what the right thing is. So this poem is a reminder. This poem is going to remind us to listen to Hashem, 
and to listen to the Torah and to make good choices. At the very end of the Parsha, Hashem tells Moshe, Moshe, I want you to climb this mountain, the mountain named Nevo, Har Nevo. You're going to climb up to the top of the mountain. And from the top of the mountain, you're going to have an incredible view. You're going to be able to see the entire land of Israel. Because Moshe, you're not going to get to go into Israel. I know we've discussed this earlier. It's already agreed on. Moshe's not going to Israel. But as a consolation prize, at least you're going to get to see the entire land of Israel. You'll see how beautiful it is. And we're going to have to stay tuned for our next Parsha. Uh, for Moshe to actually climb that mountain and get that great view. And that is the end of Parshat Ha'azinu Shabbat Shalom.